You have to show me. We're live. Hi, Mr. Sonny, we are live now. Good morning and welcome to this special edition, the fourth anniversary of uh, USG. That's, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that correctly very shortly. But this is the fourth anniversary of this celebration and um, we are very pleased to have you in the, in the uh, webinar with us. And um, it's, I must say it's going to be a special one because the Ex His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, is going to be with us. And I think he's already available to talk to us very shortly. We will be looking at, apart from celebrating the fourth edition, uh, the anniversary of the USGEAA, we'll be creating opportunities for youth uh, participation in social and economic activities for Lagos State. And His Excellency the Governor, about Jide Sawolu, will be talking to us and giving us his plans for that. Now, of course, we also have the Acting Consul General of the United States Consulate General, who's uh, going to be also talking to us very briefly. And then we have the President of the United States Government Exchange Program. Okay, that's, I just wanted to get it right before I start messing myself up. And that's the Dr. Jude MMA. He also will be talking to us. So right now, we will need to let you understand that this webinar is one that's going to be seamless. The only person allowed to make any mistake at all, because I've already started making some mistakes, is me. Nobody else is allowed to. That means please follow the due guidelines that says whatever the situation, please, unless you are asked to speak, do not unmute your microphone. All right? Don't unmute your microphone, but that will be controlled anyway from another area. And then I also want to also let you know that there'll be time for questions and answer. And I will be privileged to present those questions because as you said, it's gonna be time bound and it's gonna be seamless. We will not allow voice questioning. I will take questions when you send it in, you send it to the chat room, I will take the questions as they come. If the questions are too many, bear with me. I will do the best I can to make sure it doesn't take too much of our time, but questions, as many questions as possible will be read. Okay, so welcome to the program. Now, I would like to also stress that this kind of webinar, which celebrates the fourth anniversary of United States Government's Exchange Program, is one that gives everyone the opportunity to listen at first hand from government's point of view, people's point of view, and of course, the embassy's point of view. I want to thank the United States Consulate General for what they've been doing over the years, for the fact that you've sustained this you know, uh, process in a way that has made us very happy. We feel entitled, but we also feel quite, um, how would I put it now? We're happy that you are dealing with us in a manner that you are, and so we are indebted to you. That's what I'm trying to pray. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, first, let me invite Mr. Jude MMA. But before I do that, I would like to give the citation. Mr. Jude MMA has a PhD in leadership and organizational development with specialization in managing change. He's a Hubert Humphrey Fellow of the United States of America. He has a PhD in leadership and organized change from Walden University in the United States. He is a 1981 Master of Science degree graduate from the University of Lagos. He also holds a Bachelor of Science second class offer in economics from the University of Benin. Dr. MMS started his banking career with the Central Bank of Nigeria in 1981 as a research officer. Early in 1982, he joined the International Merchant Bank PLC, IMB, and he also worked in several banks in various capacities, rising to top executive management positions. He won the United States Fulbright Scholarship Award in 1998 
for the prestigious Hubert Humphrey Fellowship Program at the Boston University. Now, Dr. MMA was the managing director, chief executive officer of ACB International Bank, a position he occupied until July 2003. He has over 25 years of finance and investment banking experience, during which time he had professional development with Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, Massachusetts, 1998, IMF and the World Bank, 1998, Boston University, 1998, and First National Bank of Chicago and American Express Bank, New York. He's currently the managing partner of Train Them Consulting uh, Services, an outfit that provides multi-sectoral human capital, banking, financial and investment management services. The company also provides support in business turnaround, transformation, revitalization, and growth. He's currently managing partner of Tandem, Train Them Consulting Services, an outfit that provides multi-sectoral human capital, banking, financial, and investment management services. Company has also provided support in business on turnaround transformation, revitalization, and growth. I hope I didn't take that a second time. Well, he's a member of an NGO, Joy Bringers Foundation, that provides personality recharacterization training in the four prisons in Lagos, Nigeria, and over 5,000 prison inmates have benefited from this program. Very laudable, I must say. Dr. Mme is the current president of the United States Government Exchange Alumni Association, as well as a national director in Full Gospel Business Fellowship International, an organization that promotes integrity and empowers leaders to make the difference in the marketplace. MMA has specific supervisory responsibility for full gospel operations in North and West Africa. Dr. Mme is currently an adjunct lecturer in the executive MBA programs of the University of Lagos. I have the pleasure of inviting Dr. Jude MMA to please take the floor and make his first presentation. Thank You're you welcome. very much, uh, Mr. Sonny Erabo. I appreciate the you know, opportunity to, you know, the executive governor of Lagos State, His Excellency Babajide Samulu, our guest of honor for our fourth anniversary webinar, Mr. Stephen Ibeli, the Acting Consul General, U.S. Consul Lagos, our keynote speaker, our moderator, Sonny Rabo, a foremost media practitioner and a fellow of the United States Exchange Alumni Association, the U.S. Consulate personnel here present, our distinguished fellows of the United States Government Exchange Alumni Association, members of the public, and gentlemen of the press. May I, on this great and historic occasion of the celebration of the fourth anniversary of the United States Exchange Alumni Association, start by first welcoming our guest of honor, the Executive Governor of, Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji Saudu, who is our main speaker for this webinar. We are delighted, sir, that in spite of your very busy schedule, you are accepted to be with us in this program. We indeed consider it a great privilege. May we also welcome Mr. Stephen Ebelli, the Acting Consul General of the United States Consulate Lagos, we are pleased to have you, sir. I want to welcome Mr. Sonny Rabo and to thank him for accepting at very short notice to anchor this webinar. We also welcome a number of U.S. consulate personnel here present who have worked assiduously with us to ensure that this day is a reality. And to our members and fellows of the United States Exchange Alumni Association from all over the country in this program, may I welcome you all. The United States Exchange Alumni Association is an umbrella association that brings together over 20 different exchange groups 
including the fellows of the Mandela Washington, including the Hubert Humphrey fellows, fellows of the International Visitors Leadership Program, the Fulbright fellows, and so on. Our fellows are indeed are individuals that have the privilege to travel to the United States on a US government fully sponsored professional development program. And on return to Nigeria, are actively promoting various social projects for societal transformation. The theme for this webinar is creating opportunities for youth participation in social and economic activities in Lagos. The choice of this topic is considered timely and appropriate and predicated on the fact that youth in our nation represents the strength, the energy, and the future of our society. Harnessing and manage, managing the potential and resources of our young citizens for social and economic transformation is strategic and is worth the effort and the investment. In every society, the challenges confronting our youth will always attract our attention because the youth represent over 60% of our population. We're indeed happy that the governor of our flagship state is here to share perspectives on this topic. We look forward to an engaging, stimulating, and resourceful deliberation. I want to thank you all. God bless you. Mr. Rabo, are you there? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Dr. MMA. <laughs> I have to really get used to calling you doctor because you are such a pali pali friend to me that I keep saying Oboihana. Anyway, this is a very laudable you know, celebration. And it's the one that I expect, because of the topic that His Excellency has chosen, I expect the youths who are here present to gain a lot from it. And also the one who are watching on our social media, on the live stream. Now, the next speaker, of course, is our most respected uh, acting um, consulate, uh, consul general of the US consulate. And his name is Stephen Ibeli. But I'm going to take a short citation of him before he comes on the microphone. Stephen Ibeli comes to Lagos, having most recently served in several assignments in Europe, the Middle East and North Africa. In his most recent assignment as public affairs officer in Munich, Germany, he managed all public engagements for the consulate. Stephen began his tenure in the foreign service in the general services section of the US embassy in Moscow, providing the full scope of logistic support for VIP visits and overseeing all embassy property. In his capacity as a foreign service officer, Stephen has served as spokesperson for the US Embassy to Libya, director of the Middle East Partnership Initiative, MAPI, regional offices in Tunisia and Morocco, and public diplomacy officer in Najaf, Iraq. His consular tour included a stint in Moscow, Oman. Stephen was part of the last class that completed the Arabic field school in Sidi Bol Said, Tunisia, before its closure. As a Peace Corps volunteer in Shimket, Kazakhstan, Stephen trained future English teachers at the Pedagogical Institute. Prior to a career in diplomacy, Stephen spent a decade in the private sector in Saudi Arabia and Equatorial Guinea with Raytheon and ExxonMobil specializing in training and development of national employees. I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Stephen Ibeli, whose name I always say is sounding like a Benin name. You're welcome, sir. Please over to you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I think that was probably the best reading of my bio that I have ever heard. So thank you so <laughs> So, so very much. And yes, the rumors are true. I am indeed from Edo State. Um, so a real shout out to everyone. Uh, Deu, 
Ikaro Ina Kuana Hau Una De. Um, so really great wishes uh, to all of you. Good morning. Um, hopefully no shakara, no kasala, no palava, um, and all protocols duly observed and very uh, well respected. I'm very pleased to be here with you to commemorate the fourth anniversary of the United States Government Exchange Alumni Association, one that was hard won that was really took a long time to set up and we are so happy um, to have such a great a partner in this wonderful association that really covers all of our exchange programs and indeed thousands of alumni. Um, let me start really by welcoming our incredibly special guest, the executive governor of Lego State, the leader of the Center of Excellence, uh, Baba Jide Sanwolulu. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you for taking your, the time out of what really I can imagine is an extremely busy schedule for you, uh, especially on a, on a very rainy Friday. So thank you so very much, sir, uh, for, for joining us. And really special congratulations to our alumni. Uh, who, as you've just heard, have worked tirelessly and continue to work tirelessly over the last four years to impact uh, their communities through countless outreach efforts. Uh, we have over 8,000 exchange alumni in Nigeria, with over 5,000 really coming from the South, hailing from the South. Um, and many of them are young, uh, young, young people. Um, we do this uh, deliberately. We invest in the youths of the countries that we serve in all over the world. Uh, and we do this for a reason. We do this um, to support the youth, to develop the youth, to really educate the incoming generation of leaders. Indeed, uh, the generation of leaders to take over Nigeria, to govern Nigeria. Um, it is such an important uh, and really sacred obligation to be able to do that and a privilege as well. Um, we have such amazing outreach projects. We have waste to wealth skills training that talks about recycling. We have an amazing amount of teacher uh, training programs, mentoring programs for secondary school students, virtual classes for out of school uh, children cleanup campaigns, gender-based violence awareness campaigns, STEM education for girls, and I am just touching the tip of the iceberg. Our alumni are so active. Many of the times we don't even know what everyone is doing because so many people are doing um, so much. Um, we remain committed to strengthening human capital for inclusive Nigerian economic growth and human development. And our alumni are at the forefront, forefront of those mission policy goals. Um, we also have a vast array of exchange programs uh, where we send um, exchange program participants to the United States. Um, during the pandemic, we did not stop. We, we and then instead pivoted to virtual engagements. Uh, where we could still have uh, the exchange programs, but through the lens of a camera and the, the visuals of, of a TV screen. But the information, the substance remained uh, the same. Uh, we support all exchange programs uh, to improve the capacity of people from all walks and works of life. Uh, our Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI, is a, is a, a huge program uh, and really has thousands of members. The Hubert Humphrey Fellowship, the International Visitors Leadership Program, the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, we are teaching 250 currently women entrepreneurs. We had 12,400 applications for this program a real testament to, to the quality of the programming and also trust in the brand, the brand of the US government, the brand of our exchange programs and the brand of our alumni. Um, tech women, 
the Mandela Washington Fellowship, the Global Mentorship Program, and of course, the Fulbright Program in Nigeria that has been in existence since 1954. Uh, incredible, incredible engagement all over Nigeria, all in every city, in every town in this country. Um, our exchange programs and funding opportunities are only really a few of the resources we make available to young people in Nigeria. We also have the Opportunity Funds Program. This year, we sent 30 high-performing but low-income students to the United States. Uh, on a, a scholarship. Most of them had fully funded scholarships to the United States. Uh, Nigeria is the 11th largest sending country of students to the United States, and we want that to continue. Many of them are self-paying or have partial scholarships. We have a very vast and sophisticated Education USA operation here in Lagos that really helps students to prepare to apply for those, those universities. Of those 30 that we sent on fully funded scholarships, one of them had the highest JAM score in Nigeria, the highest JAM score in the country. Um, and he is currently attending Columbia University and Ivy League school um, on a full scholarship. We reach many of these students through our American corners, our American spaces. We have spaces in 13 locations in Southern Nigeria, a major expansion of this network. We have expanded from six to 13 in a year. Um, and they are located in many um, secondary and tertiary cities where it's very difficult to travel, um, maybe to Lagos or to other major cities to participate in these programs. Indeed, some of the American spaces are joining us today uh, on, uh, on this wonderful, wonderful event. And we are very, very, very happy about that. And we are very happy to invest in our centers um, that stretch um, from Oyo to Calaba, to Port Harcourt, to Ibadan, Enugu, Alka, Benin City, and others. And we are very, very proud of the work that we have done to be able to stand those up. To quote our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, Engaging with youth is essential to tackling the grave threats to democracy and human rights. And the US government will continue to dedicate resources and funding towards the development of Nigerian youth because we firmly believe that Nigeria, that the youth in Nigeria are Nigeria's greatest, uh, greatest asset and greatest treasure uh, and indeed the future of this country. Nigeria cannot succeed if the youth are not included in governance, wealth creation, and poverty alleviation. It is just a simple fact. Um, no matter where you are in the world, we are all living with unprecedented challenges. And now with a global pandemic, the list has been added to. But the same interconnectedness that amplifies these global challenges also makes it possible for us to solve them, to tackle them, to take resources and be able to find solutions. And many times the solutions are coming from our youth who are so wonderfully engaged, often without little funding or little money because they have numbers and numbers are important to be able to, to engage communities to be able to, sh to show up in strength, to be able to bring 80 people to a cleanup campaign, 150 to a youth event. Indeed, I was in Ibadan last week and I attended a Saturday program uh, for Yali on job skills. There were 85 people there. Um, and this is just, just one example among many and hundreds of examples. The governor of Akiti State branded some of his vehicles with the IVLP logo because of the great work that our IVLP association is doing in Akiti State. And indeed, the governor is an exchange program alumna from the International Visitor Leadership Program. So indeed, our exchange programs not only touch the youth, but also touch the leaders of our country, uh, of Nigeria, who have, ex who have participated in these exchange programs. Um, solving Nigeria's challenges, of course, requires new approaches, new thinking, 
novel ways in which to approach this problem. And the youth and their champions are at the forefront uh, of this effort and must be fully engaged to be able to, to contribute um, to, to this effort. Again, I would like to applaud all of you, all of our alumni um, who really volunteer themselves, their time, and indeed sometimes money out of their own pockets to make sure that uh, an event goes, uh, goes well. Um, we are dedicated to supporting alumni and we have done many things this year to be able to do that. We focused all of our grants only on alumni and we are beginning to, uh, to fund many of those, those projects. We are looking at an alumni small grants uh, program for next year that we are putting together now. Every city we go to, every event we attend, we invite alumni. We invite them to lunches. We invite them to dinners. We invite them to events. We sponsor events for our alumni because we do not forget. We do, and we remember the contribution that all of you bring every, each and every day even though you are so busy, even though you have jobs, even though that you're working hard um, to support your families and your lives, you have not forgotten about that volunteerism. You have not forgotten about that call to action to help others around you that may be less uh, fortunate. And so it is with deep, deep um, passion, it is with deep thankfulness um, that we are so appreciative of all of your efforts. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. I should say that um, the consulate, the consul general of the US consulate um, general in Lagos. And uh, thank you for the insight you've uh, approached, you've told us about, especially for the youth. But before we go on to His Excellency, the governor of Lagos State, let me please crave your indulgence to invite the General Secretary or General, uh, Secretary General of the USGEE, AA, uh, Mrs. Tinuola Aino, who's going to make a presentation on the activities and programs of the United States um, Government Exchange Alumni Association. Tinuola Aino, please. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, the Acting Consul General, United States Consulate, you're welcome, sir. The Deputy Public Affairs Officer, United States, the Senior Special Assistant to the Commissioner of Education, Dr. Adetola Salau, you're welcome, ma. Alumni members and fellow Nigerians, I welcome you all to this laudable webinar. My name is Tinola Aino. I'm the Secretary General of the United States Government Exchanges Alumni Association, and I'll be debriefing you all on who we are, our member associations, and the projects implemented by our member associations and some of some individuals. I'll be sharing my screen with you. The United States Government Exchanges Alumni Association is an umbrella body to over 20 exchange programs sponsored by the United States government. Members of the various alumni associations have been privileged to travel to the United States on a professional training. Now this program ranges between two weeks to 10 months. And upon return to Nigeria, they become members of the alumni and they also implement the knowledge gain through social transformational projects in various communities. In November, 2020, the uh, United States Government Exchanges Alumni Association in collaboration with the United States Consulate and the lo Solo Local Council Development Area implemented a waste well training themed Youth Empowerment for Climate Action. The first one of this training had 154 beneficiaries who were young school leavers. They were trained on how to transform waste items into materials that can be sold in the market. They were also trained on how to be good ambassadors in their various communities. And I must say that some of the beneficiaries of this training have become financial pillars in their families. These are some of the webinars implemented by the USGA. And I'm glad to inform you all that Honorable Abike Dabere Erewa and Dr. John Momo are members of the USGAA. As we all know, March is the historic month for women at the United States Government Exchange Alumni Association 
we celebrate women achievers who have transformed lives and impacted societies. This year, we were featured on Channels TV. Another prestigious program sponsored by the United States government is the International Visitors Leadership Program, IVLP. And as mentioned by the Acting Consul General, Ambassador Stephen Ibelli, His Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kayede Fayemi, is an alumni member of IVLP. Early this year, members of IVLP held a strategic meeting with His Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, and some of the outcomes of this meeting will be mentioned because of my presentation. The IVLP, in collaboration with six local government chairmen are still counting, implemented a enlightenment program in various communities. Now, the sensitization program trained community members on how to achieve a, a, a community free, free of rape, how to end child molestation and domestic violence. In May 2021, 164 secondary school students from three public schools at Sumilere, Ikota, and Ejibo were graduated from the IVLP mentorship program. Now, this eight weeks mentorship program trains students on leadership skills, career decision, you know, social ethics, and they were also exposed to scholarship opportunities from the Education USA. Also at Ekiti in July this year, 300 students graduated from the IVLP mentorship program, both in Lagos and Ekiti. They also trained the students on um, waste to wealth uh, management in terms of you know, transforming like pure water nylon into um, interlocking, roofing sheets and others. The teachers were not, also not left out, both in Lagos and Ekiti State. Seminars were organized for the teachers titled The Role of the Role Model, and the teachers were trained and enlightened on the crucial role they play in shaping the lives of students, thereby shaping the future. Mrs. Olasubomi, an IVLP alumni, um, created a climate share facility at Teddy or your state. Now, this facility is targeted at rural women in Parry Deb. So they are encouraged to bring their share nuts to the facility, which is processed into share butter. And each day, the facility produces two tons, uh, uh, two tons of, of share butter. And this project is sponsored by the Coca-Cola Foundation. Also, Ms. Saudat Salami trained 50 stay-at-home moms in collaboration with the United States Consulate. Now, these mothers were trained on business accounting skills, e-commerce. They were, their, their development capacity was, was built. And I'm glad to say that since 2019, Mrs. Saudat has trained over 300 women across Africa. We have the Young Africa Leaders Initiative, another initiative of the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, and it's also a program sponsored by the United States government. Now, this gallery is targeted at young Africans who are passionate about shaping the future in business, entrepreneurship, um, governance, civic engagement. So they undergo a two weeks intense training program across regional leadership centers in Africa. So Nigeria being in West Africa, our regional leadership center is at Accra, Ghana. Early this year, the uh, Nigeria chapter of Yali Aralski implemented a school tour project. Now this project was implemented in 21 schools across 21 communities across 16 states in the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Now over 4,000 students and 200 teachers benefited from this project. They were trained on sustainable development before, which has to do with education. And they were also encouraged on not to be deterred by the disruption caused by uh, COVID-19. These are some of our prestigious uh, the Yali alumni members who are impacting lives in you know, transforming communities. I would uh, mention Junie Obi. She's a woman entrepreneur who is passionate about grassroots women by empowering them through um, skills and others being financially liberated and, in, and independent. We also have um, Rauf Hamid who transforms um, waste products into crystal glass. Currently, he has trained over 50 young youths um, at Mushin Local Council Development Area. We also have Joyce Woise, who is a medical practitioner, and she's always implementing um, health projects in the North. And she collaborated with health organizations to sensitize some community members and also get them vaccinated against diseases. 
A press conference fellowship is another exchange program sponsored by the United States government. Now they uh, implemented a speakers program this year. It was hybrid due to um, COVID-19. And it's held at the uh, Murami High School at Obafemi Awolo University, Ileife. We also have the Joy Bridges Foundation. Now this foundation is focused on prison inmates. So they are trained on various courses and hand skills so that when they leave the prison, they easily integrate into the society. And over 6,500 prison inmates have benefited from this program. And this program, this foundation is currently managed by the president of the United States Government Exchanges Alumni Association, Dr. Jude Ememe. We also have Mrs. Adeze Ojuku, who is also a member of an alumni of Herbert Humphrey Fellowship. She's the head of the USGA Media Committee, and she has been very, very instrumental in pushing the alumni on print media and on various media platforms. She's, the, uh, she's an editor with Sunday Times, and she's also the publisher of an online development magazine known as DevCom Radar. We have another exchange program called the Food by Teachers Excellence Achievement Alumni, and this particular association is focused on teachers. Now, teachers from various states are selected and they are trained in partner universities in the United States. Now, this year, they implemented a, a grassroots uh, workshop, you know, training um, community members in the states on how to live peacefully with other, you know, active tribes and, you know, religious, um, religious people. They also implemented a STEM hub project in Nobu State. Now, 100 female students benefited from this. They were trained on coding, robotics, and how to use STEM graduates. Uh, teachers were also not left out. They were trained on how to you know, teach students online, TV, radio, and also content creation. And 27,000 public school teachers benefited from this um, training. Another um, Exchange program of the United States, uh, sponsored by the United States government, is the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. Now, this constitutes of uh, business women, so they are trained on how to scale up their business and expand their frontiers. One of the alumni members, Helen Oduyemi, went to a community and trained the farmers on how to scale up production and the new farming techniques. And then she saw a need. She saw that they did not have access to potable bond water. So she sunk a borehole and they now have access to clean water. As you can see on my screen, we have the before picture and after picture. These are some of the alumni members of AWE. And we have Dr. Yemisi Adeye, she's a business tycoon, also the president of AWE. She was awarded uh, with the ECOWAS Youth Council Award in Accra, Ghana, early this year, based on her works on you know, drug prevention education um, within Nigeria and other African, West African countries. We also have Adane Uche, she's also a member of AWE, and she won a grant of $10,000 from the United States Africa Development Foundation, and she used this money to scale up her business. Another technical exchange program sponsored by the United States government is Tech Women. Now, the innovated something very, 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 very impacting. They saw that there was a high maternal mortality rate in Nigeria, and they came together and created a platform, an app called MAMI. Now this platform is, custom, has, is customized to various languages, and it has details for pregnant women and women, new mothers, you know, it tells them on, you know, birth preparedness, if there's gonna be complication and how to take care of their babies, or, you know, after, after birth and all that. So. Um, this app is currently used in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Over 5,000 women have benefited from this, um, using this mobile app. And then we have the Quarantine Youth Fellowship. This is an initiative of the United States Council of Lagos State. And they are currently embarking on a, on a campaign, it's a permanent voters campaign. They're seriously encouraging youth across Nigeria to go and register and obtain a permanent voter's card. They're also encouraging the youth to join political parties so that they can contest in the local government elections, states and federal government elections so that they can be part of governance and decision-making in order to lift Nigeria up to where we want it to be. And they also went on a, uh, on a media tour where they informed Nigerians on their vision for Nigeria and for the youth as well. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Tino Aino. Thank you very much indeed. That's a very detailed one. And uh, well, at this point, may I just quickly say if every one of us can put on his um, camera so that we can see as many of your faces as possible. I will ask you to do that for 30 seconds, maybe one minute max, because right now I'm about to bring in our most revered His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, and I'm going to take his citation very, very shortly. But please bear in mind, put your cameras on so that we can see your face, your pretty nice faces, and that will help a lot. Okay, citation of Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu, Executive Governor of Lagos State. Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu was elected the 15th governor of Lagos State on the platform of the All Progressives uh, Congress, APC, was declared winner of the March 9, 2019 gubernatorial elections by the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC, on Sunday, March 10, 2019, after defeating 44 other contestants representing various political parties in the election. It's a, a, a product of resounding victory. Mr. Samolu pulled 75.6% of the total valid votes cast in the election. His victory at the election is a solid endorsement of his leadership aptitude and the All Progressives Congress APC politics of development and inclusiveness in Lagos State. As an inspirational leader, with a track record of performance, his candidacy was welcomed by Lagosians as a continuation of a strong legacy of development in the state. Mr. Somolu, who was born on June 25, 1965 in Lagos State, is a reliable party man and astute politician, reputed for his people-centered ideology, his foray into public service started after decades of accomplishments you know, uh, in the private sector, especially in the Nigerian banking sector, where he retired as a general manager of one of the major commercial banks in Lagos. This accomplished private sector expert, whose innovative mind quickly established him as an exemplary public sector reformer, started his early education at government demonstration school, Surulere, and uh, Ijebu Ife Grammar School, Open State. For his higher education, he proceeded to the University of Lagos for a bachelor's degree in surveying and geograph geoinformatics and a master's degree of business administration, MBA in management from the same university. Sesomolu is also an alumnus of the prestigious Harvard Kennedy School of Government, London Business School, and the Lagos Business School. He is also a member of the Nigerian Institute of Directors, IOD, Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, CIPM, and a fellow of Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, NITAG. In 2003, his eventful career opened to yet another colorful chapter with his appointment, first as special advisor to the then deputy governor, Mr. Femi Pedro, and on corporate matters, and later as special advisor to the then executive governor, His Excellency Ola Ahmed Tinubu on corporate matters in 2004. In 2003, his eventful career opened to yet another colorful chapter of his appointment as a special advisor Okay, I've taken that before, and uh, Sesamolu's entry became a reference point for professionalism and excellence in the public service. At 39, he was appointed Acting Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget from 2004 to 2005, and became a Substantive Commissioner for Commerce and Industry in 2007, following his exceptional performance. His managerial imprint became noticeable at the Lagos 
State Ministry of Establishment training and pensions in 2007 when he served as a commissioner. During this period, he authored an executive, executable civil service framework designed around the Human Capital Performance Index, which puts him, which puts Lagos State civil servants amongst the highest and regularly paid in the country. A public officer with an impressive record of accomplishments it was instrumental to the setting up of Lagos State Pension Commission, LASPEC, a contributory pension scheme, um, even ahead of the federal government of Nigeria. I'm taking the slide on the screen, forgive me. A public officer with an impressive record of accomplishment was instrumental to the setting up of Lagos State Pension Commission, contributory pension scheme, even ahead of the federal government of Nigeria. Some of his notable contributions include setting up and serving as the pioneer chairman of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund, which and which are the board of the Lagos Security, Lagos Security State Trust Fund, tracking and intelligent analysis of internally generated revenue by the various government agencies and parasitas, including the Board of Internal Revenue, BIR, for executive consideration and policy making, as well as preparation and publication of the Lagos State Economic Empowerment and Development Strategy, last Next slide. It is also to some of those credits that the Lagbus Asset Management Limited, Lagbus, was established to ease the public transportation woes of Lagosians by complementing the bus rapid transport BRT system in Lagos State. Mr. Somolu also established the Control and Command Center in Alausa, one of the initiatives of the LS LSSTF, which significantly improved the capacity of the security agencies to respond to distress calls in a swift and timely manner. Next slide. Mr. Samolu was appointed the Chief Executive Officer of the Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, LSBPC, in 2016. And in just two years, the visionary administrator had returned the hitherto struggling organization to the path of efficiency and profitability. He also re-engineered the organization to effectively tackle housing deficit in the state, which again validated his credentials as a resourceful leader and problem solver. His valuable experience garnered from executive level roles in the private and public sectors has not only distinguished him, but also made him a valuable resource to some notable organizations on whose boards he has served. Next slide. Next slide. At the core of his belief is a vision of a greater enterprising career in the private sector. His stellar record in public service and selfless contributions to the society would have attracted international recognitions and accolades at home. But as a man steeped in modesty, these awards and laurels serve as no more than an encouragement to keep him on the path of service to God and humanity. As the 15th executive governor of Lagos State, Mr. Sonwolu has spearheaded and re-engineered many socioeconomic development programs in the state under his people-focused development agenda, aptly named project themes representing traffic management and transportation, health and environment, education and technology, making Lagos a 21st century state and security governance. Next slide. A devout Christian and family-focused man whose marriage to Dr. Ibijoke Samolu is blessed with lovely children. Mr. Samolu, in addition to his love for public speaking, is a member of numerous prestigious clubs, which include the Koei Club 1938, the Island Club, and the Yoruba Tennis Club. I am pleased, very honored to welcome in our midst to invite 
His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, to take the floor, sir, Your Excellency. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Egon, Sonny Rabo. I had sat down here very quietly for the last 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so. But when you started reading this citation, um, I was wondering if indeed your journalist skills had to um, be brought to the fore. And, um, um, and I was wondering if all of this were indeed um, the things that I've done. But I would say that you've taken five minutes of my time. Um, because it's obvious that, I mean, as a 15 governor, everybody knows already. Uh, but thank you very much for all of the kind words you've used to describe my person. And I feel um, highly honored that um, I'm speaking, you know, at an event that I consider a great honor that has uh, been extended to me this morning. And so let me officially acknowledge and um, recognize the president of the United States State Government. Um, Employment um, Alumni Association, um, the Exchange Alumni Association from the United States Government, um, Dr. Jude Ememe, who himself um, is an accomplished uh, banker, um, a senior colleague for that matter. I, I could remember his face slightly um, as an ex-MD of ABC um, on Broad Street there in those days. Um, and I want to say, um, Thank you very much for the great works, you know, um, at that time. And of course, to also acknowledge the acting Consul General, uh, Mr. Stephen Ibelli. Um, thank you very much. You know, your resume also speaks volumes. Um, all of the great things you've done for your country and you're doing for humanity, you know, whilst you serve in that capacity. Um, my greetings to the Consul General and Madam Ambassador, uh, myself. Um, I also want to acknowledge, you know, with a lot of energy, um, Teniola Aino, uh, who just finished her presentation. You know, if we're giving the whole day to her, I'm sure she has something to talk about. You see, that is, that is a typical youth, and that is the typical energy that reverberates around, you know, the city and, and the country. And I want to, um, acknowledge all of the great alumni, you know, um, that has had the opportunity, you know, to have passed through United States Government um, Exchange Program. Um, I'm told it's over 8,000 nationally, right? And um, over 5,000 are, are in the southern part of the country. I'm sure a number of that, 5,000 are also residents in Lagos. So indeed, it's an honor and something that we need to truly acknowledge and um, thank um, the United States government, thank everybody that has been part of this, you know, for um, bringing this to our citizens. I, I certainly have not benefited from it. Um, I don't know if I still qualify for one, but indeed it will be something that I'll be looking forward to. Um, and, so, and so that that sort of like gives, you know, the context and the perspective, you know, at this um, webinar, which is, you said I should you know, sort of like tiptoe opportunities around creating opportunities for youth participation in social economic activity. I think for us to be able to do great justice to that is first to thank, you know, the organizers and to thank the United States government once again. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, um, the USS Hassel Woody Williams was, um, was in Lagos, you know, um, and it was on a training exercise with Nigerian army. You know, um, Lagos continue to receive a lot of attention, you know, given the fact that the Consul General is here and used to also have a the embassy itself. So we cherish those relationship. We appreciate, you know, that even um, servicemen that were on board of that particular um, um, vessel went around um, Ajegule and they, were, they painted some public schools Thank you very much, you know, and we we'll continue to appreciate and look forward to deeper levels of cooperation um, with the United States government, with Nigeria, and of course, indeed, with Lagos State government. So for us to be able to understand where Lagos sits, you know, in the context of Nigeria, 
is to remind ourselves that Nigeria has a, a, you know, a land area of, of well over 900,000 square kilometer, about 923,000. And Lagos has only 3,600 there. So meaning that Lagos occupies less than 0 0.36, you know, less than 0 0.36 of the landmass of the country. So of that 0 0.36, which is less than, you know, of course, it's less than half a percentage. You know, we also have water, you know, that has taken up half, you know, of that, of that, of that 0 0.36. So in a tiny little um, space called Lagos, um, it has over 10% of the, of the nation's population, right? So indeed, the demography of the state shows that it's densely populated, is the most populous city, I mean, city-state in the whole of Africa, and it continues to attract, you know, um, all of the opportunities for, 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 for youth in all, in all parts of the country, and, and Lagos continue to remain, you know, home to, um, a lot of our citizens, there is really no ethnic national, you know, that is not resident in Lagos. So as, as, as you know, is a double-edged thing, as that in itself presents, you know, huge, you know, um, um, responsibility and it presents huge challenges, you know, of traffic management, you know, of, of environmental issues, you know, of pollution. It also presents a huge opportunity because it comes with a huge demography of youth. You know, Lagos in itself has about seven and a half percent, you know, of, of the youth population of this country. So we're talking of the age range between 15, you know, and 35 and up to 40. By the time you are taking to 40, it grows to about, you know, seven, eight, eight, nine percent. You know, so, so, so within this tiny little space, we've seen that um, it carries a huge burden, you know, for, for, for the nation. Um, and, and we're indeed happy that we're doing that, you know, for, for the country right now. But, but more importantly is to talk about what the youth have been able to achieve even on their own. And I think we certainly cannot forget, you know, the great stuff that are happening in the tech industry. Just a report came out, um, I think it was last week, that clearly, clearly shows that, you know, Lagos has since well overtaken Cape Town, Johannesburg, you know, Durban, Nairobi as a tech hub, you know, in Africa, you know, and, and I'm sure by the time we talk of tech startups, I will tell you what we've done directly and indirectly as a government, but it's also to acknowledge the great works, the likes of Paystack, you know, Andela, Florida Waves have done, Vibranium, and so many other, you know, um, 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 tech start startups, you know, that are competing with, you know, with global brands, you know, um, today. It's also important to say that Lagos continue to remain home to the entertainment and the tourism you know, industry, you know, in our country. And I'm sure you've seen, you know, some of our youth, you know, the likes of Bonaboy, Whiskey, great talents that I've shown around, you know, Davido, Teniola, you know, Tiwa Savage, Simi, we can go on and on, you know, and, and all of the opportunity, even in the creative industry, you know, around Nollywood and all of the great actors that we have there. You know, similarly in fashion, you know, um, um, all of the great minds and, and the youth that we have, Larry Da Silva, um, uh, Miss Benite, you know, yesterday Laguda. These are all youth that are residents in Lagos that indeed they put Nigeria, they put Lagos, you know, on, on the global map, you know. And, and so we see that indeed with the energy that we have around, the least government can do is to be able to harness all of this strength, you know, create an environment, you know, and an ambience where all of them can do great things that they're doing. But more importantly, they certainly need to know that the government is in support of all of the initiatives, you know, that they have. You know, so for us, even as a government, you know, is to say that um, when you talk about youth, where is even where we are so seated in our cabinet, you know, I have about five cabinet members that are under 40, you know, I have about 12 that are under 45, you know, in a cabinet of about 40 people, you know, and, and, and it's, it's a huge pressure, you know, to get you know, one third of a cabinet that are women to get, you know, about 15% that are, that are youth, the commissioner for finance, commissioner for, for um, technology, the commissioner for agriculture. These are all people that are under the age of 40, you know, and I also have about 60 um, special assistants. Of that 60, I'm, I'm glad to say that about 42 of them, right, are under 40. In fact, about 30 of them are under 35. 
you know, and they're all, you know, running great, great, you know, offices. They're, 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 you know, one of them was mentioned by um, Tinu while she was talking, she was acknowledging my SSA on education, Dr. Salau, I mean, she, she's, she, I mean she's, she's about your age. And so we deliberately, even as a government, you know, whilst putting a team together, says that we need to create a space, you know, for the youth, we need to create, you know, an opportunity for them in governance, in politics, in leadership, because indeed, you know, the future, it's about, you know, them and it's indeed for them, you know. So, so we, 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 we say without any fear of doubt that they do not just mold the box and the youth want everything. They want everything um, just about now. You know, so, so what are the things that, that we are, are doing? First is to look around, you know, policies and laws that can enhance and improve, you know, our, our delivery, you know, as a government. We've been in government um, two years and, and three months now. So meaning that we've done, you know, almost 57% of our time, you know, in a four year tenure. And we'll continue to critically analyze, you know, and look at how well we have been able to intervene you know, given this four year um, of, 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 um, of very um, appreciative um, opportunity that negotiations have given to us. Whilst we set up our economic agenda um, two and a half years ago, right, um, the global pandemic, which is the COVID-19, um, came in at a time in which nobody expected it. You know, I, I think Stephen also talked about it that that has indeed changed globally, you know, how everybody nations and governments, you know, and businesses had to, you know, relate, you know, and, and actually, you know, respond to, to the pandemic. And that in itself gives credence to why we're all seated in our offices and at home, and we'll have well over 200 people in this webinar, and we all can still achieve the objective that we set for ourselves. This is some of the, the, the outcomes of what COVID has, has given to us. And I dare say that Lagos State has indeed responded very well. We continue to remain the epicenter of the nation. We have carried the burden of, of ensuring that half of, of all of the infections, half of the, half of the management of the COVID has been resident you know, in Lagos. And, and of course, you know that at some point, the, the WHO and the World Bank you know, rated Nigeria as the fourth most um, responsive, positive response you know, um, to COVID you know, in, in the world. That for us, if other things are not working well for us, that in, in my view, had worked fairly well, you know, um, for us, but we're not, we're not out of it yet completely. We're still tracking and managing the third wave, but we're believing that we're going to flatten it out and we're able to see, you know, a downward trend so that we can, you know, get back to our businesses and our work, you know, and we can continue to make Lagos, you know, um, um, well for, for each and every one of us. And like I said, you know, the first thing is, is around policies, you know, that has changed a bit because of the effects, you know, of, of COVID-19, how we rule ourselves, how we interact, you know, social distancing and all of it. A lot of things that should have happened, you know, in the, in the tourism, you know, in the entertainment workspaces has not taken place just because, you know, of the effect of COVID-19. But, but be that as it may, you know, we've issued out several executive order, we've issued out new bills that we believe has helped, you know, to, to position our, our, our government as one that um, is, is looking more at publicly defined projects. You know, we're, we're running our government with a lot of accountability and, trans, and transparency. And we've, we've come up with initiatives, you know, around the Eco, Eco Excel program. Eco Excel program, you know, um, the Eco Digital School, the Lagos State Science Research and Innovation Council, and of course, the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Um, these are just three, four um, interventions that I can talk, you know, uh, for the next two, three minutes, you know, um, at directly enabling and empowering, you know, our youth. The, the Lagos State Research and Innovation Council, it's, it's a body that in the last year and a half, it's been able to grant, you know, um, startups to about 150 tech startups, and they've given them grants, you know, on a year-on-year -year basis. And it's 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 um, it's gratifying to know that just one of our tech startup just last month um, received a second award as the best, you know, um, um, indigenous tech startup, 
you know, in West Africa, this award was given to the company in Abuja um, last week. You know, um, so about 150 of them, you know, have been given various grants from 5 million, 10 million to as high as 30 million in, in the science research and innovation council that we just set up. You know, the, the Eco Digital School, you know, it's, it's a complementary school that we have sitting on top of the Eco Excel program. Eco Excel program, it's a program that is targeted at all of our, you know, um, students in our primary school and secondary school, but more importantly, looking at the primary school where every of our, you know, of, of, our, of our teacher now have, you know, a handheld tablet, you know, to, to be able to design proper curriculum and proper learning, you know, um, um, tools for, for the pupils so that indeed we can begin to prepare them, you know, for, for, for the future, you know, having technology as one of the strong enabler. And right now, you know, we also just got another award on Eco Digital School. Eco Digital School also sits with part of the things that we've done with the 3000 kilometer fiber duct connectivity that we're doing in Lagos, you know. Um, so, so I'll probably just be picking things here and there so that because they're all um, interrelated. Um, we, did, we, we, we set up, you know, a model where we said we wanted to greet the whole of Lagos with fiber technology, with fiber optics, you know. So we have a 6,000 kilometer um, 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 fiber ducts connectivity that we're doing. Uh, as we speak, we've completed about 2,200 of that fiber ducts. And so whilst they're doing these fiber ducts, we're dropping um, fiber in schools, in our public schools, we're dropping fiber in our hospitals. And so we have increased and enhanced, you know, the, the digital space in a lot of our public schools. And this has created a lot of opportunity for our youth. Now going back to be teachers, to be led, to be, to be, to be um, 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 student givers in all of these schools. And we're so excited with the outcomes and outputs that we're seeing, even whilst we're just, I mean, just about a year, a year and a half old um, in that intervention. Uh, we have, you know, um, we, we created this about five years ago, but if you look at what their interventions have been in the last two years, it's been great. The Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. I'm sure a lot of people have heard, you know, about what the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund is about. This is a fund that in the last five years is given almost 10 billion, right? But more importantly, in the last two years, it's given um, close to about 6 billion, sorry, about 5.5 .5 billion, right? To a lot of startups. To date, I think they've done um, intervention in about 12,000, um, in about 12,000 MSMEs directly, you know, um, they've, they've given, you know, um, um, vocational training, they've given placement to about 7,800 artisans, They've been able to place, you know, about 50% of that number in direct, you know, employment to pursue either an entrepreneurial um, um, interventions or something. Um, we've also been able to work with two um, of, of our large um, 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 financial institutions, Access Bank and First Bank, to create a 10 billion, you know, women-led businesses. You know, 5 billion out of this 10 billion is directly at, you know, low budget schools, which have largely, largely, you know, youth population that are teaching in, in, in those schools. These are all young teachers that are between ages of, you know, 23, 24 to about 32, 33. So they've been able to keep them in employment. They've been able to keep them, you know, at work. And so this fund was provided for, for them um, sometime last year with a, with a, with a bank were able to jointly um, raise about 5 billion, you know, um, Naira to be able to keep all of the youth, you know, in, in, in this level of en en engagement. You know, we've also been able to provide, like I said, grants, you know, for new businesses, about 2,000 of them. They've been able to also support about 150 tech startups. We need to create, um, trained about 16,000 youth in various skills also within the period. Um, so, so, so the policy that, that we brought around that space is what has created um, the opportunity that I'm that I'm that I'm talking about now. Um, the last the last one year also I've seen um, a World Bank assisted project which we call the CARES C A R E S. This is a six million dollar um, stimulus package in, with with the World Bank to support directly directly young MSMEs in Lagos. 
um, um, and, and, and is really to, to reduce the disruptive economic impact of COVID-19 um, um, in the last um, 18 months or so that, that we've seen. You know, so, so like I said, these are deliberate, deliberate policy issues that, that we've brought about to see how we can um, um, enhance and improve the social economic impact to, uh, to, to, the, youth, to the youth population. You know, and, and, and each time we look at what numbers we have that are coming from there, we're excited because we know that there's still a lot more that, that we can do that are waiting you know, for us to, to come true for them. We also have what we call the, a, a program we set up, which is called the Graduate Internship Placement Program. This is a program that is looked at helping um, to date. They've done about 4,000 young people. These are all graduates. You know, you must have been a university or a, or a high institution graduate to be part of the, the graduate internship scheme. And what is it about? Um, we, we, we put them on placement in various companies, some public, some private, and we've been able to, you know, uh, pay them a salary for six months whilst going through an internship program you know, with the various, you know, companies, so that at the end of the internship program, you know, they will have, they will have um, been sufficiently grounded for them to be properly, you know, integrated into this, um, into the companies, and they become an asset, you know, to, to the companies. Because, I mean, it's usually a case of, we need one year experience, we need two year experience, and, and, and so where are they going to get this experience? So government set up this, this program, and it was targeted, you know, at, at, at graduate youth between age 22, you know, and age 35, you know, and, and I'm glad to announce that about 4,000 of, of these youths are currently enjoying, you know, this program with different, you know, um, private sector companies and some of them are also in the public sector company. So this is another policy intervention that we needed to take forward, you know, through our Ministry of, I mean, uh, Wealth Creation. Um, we also realized that even with our small land area, we can, we can, we can activate, you know, um, um, intervention in agriculture. And so we set up our agricultural value chain entrepreneur, so enterprise um, program, you know, um, um, which is directly targeted at women and youth. You know, it's, 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 it's majorly to target, it's targeted about 4,000 women and youth. I think they've been able to recruit about 3,000 as we speak. And so they are, they, are, they, are, they are helping them with programs, you know, at, to become processors or merchants in fish, in poultry, in pig, um, in rice, in, and other, you know, crops that, that, that can be grown all within, you know, the, 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 the state. So, like I said, about 3,000 direct interventions have happened, you know, um, in, within the Agricultural Value Chain Enterprise Activation Program. That's also another policy um, intervention program that is working for us. Related to that, we also have another agricultural um, initiative that we we'll call the Lagos Agropreneurial Program. This is a training program. Um, so this one, the first one, we give them grants, we give them support, we give them implements, you know, for them to become, you know, young farmers. Um, we look more around youth and some vulnerable women, you know, so that um, um, you know how issues around gender equality. So we usually take women along, you know, um, um, in, in that bracket. But the next one is the Lagos you know, Agripreneurial Program which is directly aimed at training 15,000 youth, you know, and, 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 and women in the use of modern technology to aid food production. And I think to date, about 4,500 of them have completed, you know, the training. The target is to be able to train up to like 15,000, you know, um, and then within the next two, two and a half years. But to, to, to date, you know, um, the, the numbers that I have, it's about 3,000, 3,500 that have benefited you know, from, from this Lagos Agripreneur program. And each one of them, you know, is supposed to be a sort of like a small agri tech startup company where they can use little apps, you know, and they can use as <clears throat> local agritors at the smaller, small farmers that we have all around the state and all, other neighboring states. Um, leaving um, a, a, a direct policy in agriculture is to go to the, um, and the creative industry. You know, deliberately as well too, we've looked at how can we intervene in that space. So working with <clears throat> Ebony Life Academy and the Dell Yacht Creative Academy, these are known names, you know, in that space, you know, um, Ebony Life 
you know, um, um, Ebony Studio uh, <clears throat> and Dell York Creative Academy, we've been able to train, you know, and when I say train, it will pay the full curriculum, will pay the full, you know, um, learning curriculum for about 2,300 youth in the last one year. It was something that we launched late last year and early this year. Whilst the Ebony Life Academy actually trained people um, for, I think it was about four to six months, right? I think they're they are going to the third, the, the third batch right now. And we pay for the full curriculum of, the, of, of, of that training program. So coming out of it, they become, you know, um, um, creative writers, they become, you know, um, film editors, they become, you know, um, script writers, they become, I mean, cinematographers, you know, and, and, all, and all of that. So deliberately, you know, under, you know, Lagos, you know, <clears throat> um, Academy for Creative Industry, LACI, you know, working with Ebony Life um, Academy, we've been able to directly intervene in that. With the Dell York Creative Academy, what they are doing is, is like um, an online training school. But the, 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 the beauty of it is that they've been able to create world-class curriculum, you know, and they've been able to attract global players from everywhere in the world, but more importantly from the United States, and they sit, you know, and, and they go through an online training curriculum. As we speak, about 1,200 of them are going through that, that, that training exercise as we speak. And we paid for the entire, you know, um, 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 training program. It's cost about 300,000 per person, you know, even for that single training program. And they are currently going through that. At the end of the day, they are also meant, you know, to have a project, you know, coming out from it where each and every one of them will have a team paper in which they will, be, they, will, they, will, they will score them, they will grade them, and they will know that indeed they can um, go back to become, you know, um, 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 either a player in, in, in that, in that um, creative industry or they become an entrepreneur. They become somebody that can, you know, sort of like open up all of the opportunities <clears throat> that are in that, in that space. Um, so, so for the creative industry, deliberately, deliberately, we're enhancing, you know, young people. We're creating, you know, the space for them to learn new things and to be able to compete, you know, globally um, in that space. Um, another policy, you know, that 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 we've also looked at, you know, is to is to look at um, 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 sustainable development goals. You know, we we all talked about um, 2030, you know, as as a year of achievement of of all of the all of the goals of of a sustainable development, you know, um, SGDs. But we deliberately said to ourselves that <clears throat> from 2020, 2021, let us take up, you know, a volunteer call that we can indeed, you know, put them in on different learning tools, on different creative lines and on different areas where whilst they are volunteering for us, whilst we're paying them, you know, training program, you know, and, and, and developing their skills, they can, you know, turn out to be to be to be useful for themselves, and they can help also impact, you know, in their various communities. To date, we've been able to attract about nine thousand young people into our Lagos State Volunteer Corps. They've done over three hundred thousand man hour, you know, of volunteering, in which we continue to support them, you know, with with, with little resource, whilst they continue, you know, to remain, you know, active, you know, um, in, in, in that in that whole um, 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 area. Because I mean, we know from, from, from making yourself available, you know, as a volunteer, there's a lot of interventions that you can do either in your community, you know, with a company, you know, and, and these are skills that you pick, you know, not only from yourself, but working with others. So, so <clears throat> deliberately as a government, we've, we've, we've set up some of these, these, you know, policy programs that are indeed, you know, um, targeted at youth to improve their skills, to improve their reach, and to give them, you know, a space in the room continually. You know, the second thing that I will talk about outside of, you know, policy, you know, and deliberate, you know, um, 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 <clears throat> um, creating, you know, um, a space for them is to look at our own economic agenda. Everything that we have created within our economic agenda, which we have called project teams, you know, I'm sure a lot of people know it now, you know, transportation, you know, um, traffic management and transportation, health, you know, and, um, and environment, you know, education and technology, you know, making Lagos a 21st century economy, entertainment and tourism, 
and, and security and good governance. All of these thematic pillars, right? Each one of these pillars is deliberately diagnosed to create job, job, and jobs. You know, so so in all of the interventions, you know, if the the the, the driving force is is for job creation, then indeed we know that in one form or the other, we're picking up, you know, um, um, the, 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 the economic interventions that will help, you know, the youth in our, in our population. And I can talk, you know, about some of them, you know, very, very quickly, you know, in traffic management and transportation, outside of the fact that we know that we need to move, you know, ourselves very, very quickly, you know, in a way and manner that it's an efficient, it's an resilient city that must work for all of us. You know, all of our interventions are direct infrastructure, you know, the new rail projects that we're doing, you know, I mean, our rail contractors today now have increased, you know, um, about 14,000 new people directly and indirectly have been employed, you know, on the red line and on the blue line. On the daily basis, you see a lot of very active youth that are working out of Marina, that are working, you know, as we build six, you know, um, 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 overpasses, as we build 10, you know, um, um, uh, sorry, nine um, terminals, you know, rail train terminals, you know, just so that we can governize, you know, um, the infrastructure um, 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 component of, of, our, of our agenda. And we deliberately, deliberately tell all of the contractors that each of your intervention to look for local skills, you know, in the various areas that you can en employ, that you can engage, you know, and you can make them, you know, um, um, economically, you know, um, um, enabled in their local community. We're building 15 jetties right around the city right now, because like I said, one third of Lagos is water. So we need to create, you know, a lot of, you know, um, infrastructure, on the waterways, you know, um, uh, 15 jetties we're building concurrently, about seven or six of them should be ready, should be handed over before the end of the year, right? And, and we've created a lot of movement, you know, on the waterways so that we don't need to clog, you know, um, the streets and, and the road infrastructure that we have. So, so in future, uh, we are believing that Lagos will be, you know, um, um, integrated in transportation using the, you know, the, the, the road infrastructure, the rail infrastructure and the waterways you know, infrastructure, all working together and creating a one payment solution. And I need to make this for some of you that either might have um, had to go on our BRT buses, there's a carry card that we're using. That carry card was, 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 was invented, you know, and was created by two, two youth. Each one, I think one of them is 29 year old, the other one is 31 year old. And we gave them that opportunity. And today now almost, 800,000 cards are in the hands of all negotiations by a tech startup that is indigenous, by a tech startup that is youthful, by a tech startup that is working well, like you know, a normal top-up card that you have in the UK. And so this card is meant to work in the entire you know, transportation ecosystem once it's ready. So we're excited that we've been able to give you know, that opportunity you know, to um, 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 a youth um, 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 and young entrepreneur and, and they're, they're, doing, they're doing great things. Um, also to look at what we're doing, you know, around <clears throat> um, um, education, you know, um, and like I said, education and technology, I've talked about what we're doing in last week, but in education deliberately, we've looked at our, our tertiary institution, I've said, what new things can we bring, you know, uh, about, um, on board? Of course, we're also always happy to know that LASU is the second best university in the country, right? We have two other institutions that we're actually trying to convert to, you know, um, a university, the Lagos State Polytechnic and the, um, and, and, the, and the Lagos State College of Education. We believe where should be the future work? What should be, you know, the future of work 10, 15 years from today? And we realized that we needed to take a bold policy decision, a bold policy change and convert these other two institutions into a university of technology, science and technology, and a university of education and science research. So these are two universities that will be coming on board in Lagos, um, I'm sure first quarter or second quarter next year, once we have an NUC you know, approval. This is deliberately also targeted at the youth, knowing fully well that you know, the kind of curriculums that are being developed in our universities now, <clears throat> or in our schools now, we need to be able to know where the future work is. And so that's why we had to respond and create, you know, um, and turn these, these, these institutions 
into proper universities and have the desired curriculum and help, you know, um, and the future of it. Not only that are we doing um, collaboratively with the private sector where concurrently, and no state, I mean, I'm, I imagine no university has been able to do it, we're concurrently building six, you know, um, um, student hostels in Lasso alone, six of them, you know, that's going to enhance and improve, you know, student accommodation in that university. At the end of that project, you know, we'll probably have, you know, bed space for about 12,000, you know, um, students in Lasso. You know, that, that the project is at various levels, you know, of, of construction. Um, I dare say that we're doing this with private sector because we have private funding in that, in that, in that project. And so we are truly very excited because this is also targeted at taking up, you know, the, the, the dangers of, of, of our university student needing to commune from home to school or put at the risk of, you know, neighborhood where the schools are. Let's keep them on campus. Let's be able to turn out, you know, you know, um, great, 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 great youth that will be useful, you know, to, to, to the economy and to their, to their family, you know, um, in future. Um, we've also deliberately, you know, on the, on, on the, on the, on the education side, create various hubs, you know, um, and training and learning hubs. Right now, you know, we have a hub that we call a fashion hub that has been built in Ikeja. This hub directly on a daily basis intervene with about 400, 300 to 400 MSMEs on a daily basis, on a daily basis. It's off, um, it's off Allen Avenue. It's a purpose um, um, built four story, you know, um, fashion hub that we created. As we speak, we're at the final stage, you know, um, of, of another hub, which we call the leather hub. This is coming up somewhere in Oshodi, you know, where we believe in that they will also have opportunity to, to have an incubator center, you know, for about 500 to 600 youth in the leather industry, you know, all being created for them. We also, you know, um, at advanced stage at creating two other hubs, one in Yaba, another one in Obalende for tailoring, fashion and all of that. You know, because we believe that one of the things that are lacking is that everybody is trying to become, you know, a standalone factory on their own. So once the hubs are created, they can have a lot of, you know, co-sharing of amenities and facilities. And indeed, at, at next to nothing, they can indeed create, you know, the businesses, you know, that they want for themselves. So deliberately, deliberately as a government, we're creating some of those, you know, um, 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 hubs, you know, as incubator centers where pre entrepreneurs can come, you know, design their, their wares, design, you know, um, whatever it is that they have, you know, and, and, and at, 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 at just at, at the fraction you know, of, of, of cost and, 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 and get, get, get themselves working. Another hub, you know, which is the big one that we're working with, you know, with the federal government is um, the entertainment hub, where at, at advanced stage, if as we speak now, construction is going on at converting the National Arts Theater into, you know, an entertainment, full entertainment hub that will have, you know, on the land that you see around, you know, um, uh, posting there, we're going to develop you know, a fashion hub, a tech hub, you know, and another. So the whole um, 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 National Arts Center, the entire neighborhood there, you know, this should be, should be ready, you know, towards the end of next year, right? We're going to be, be, be creating an opportunity for over 5,000 youth, almost on a daily basis, having in a convergence, you know, in, in entertainment, in tourism, in, um, in, in, in fashion, in tech, everything will be happening you know, around there. And if you're driving on the co bridge, you will notice that there's some cuddling that is happening, you know, and, 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 that, and that facility right now. These are some of the deliberate interventions, you know, that we're trying to do so that we can, you know, have the economic sustainability, you know, for our youth and we can indeed create that space, you know, for them. Um, another um, infrastructure, which we also call another technology hub, is what we're doing in Yaba. You know, Yaba, close to University of Lagos, close to Yaba Tech, used to be, you know, the home to uh, um, Andela and I think, you know, um, some of the very um, early startups. And, and so we've acquired about 27,000 square um, meter of, 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 uh, of land around the Sabo, you know, behind um, Queens, Queens, Queens College. And we're creating what we call a KIT tech campus which will be for knowledge, for innovation, for technology, and for entrepreneurial. It's a massive, massive project. We're very excited 
with it. You know, the designs, you know, have been, have been, have been, have been done. You know, where we, we hope that we can get the sign off of the likes of Google, Facebook, you know, and, and, and all of the global brands to cooperate with us, you know, and be able to develop, you know, this KITE tech club clusters, you know. So, so that is going to happen half, you know, the, it's going to be called the Yaba, you know, tech hub. And like I said, is that advanced stage, we've acquired all the land that is required, you know, the designs are being, and we're looking at a full tech start, campus, you know, in, in that, in that, in that neighborhood, you know, another final one will be on the Lekki Ekwe, you know, axis at Alaro City. We have a new city that is coming before you get to Ekwe on the right hand side, it's called Alaro City. It's a 1000 hectare of land in which, I mean, the development is being done by the private sector, but Lagos State have investment there. We're working with them because they also want to create, you know, um, another tech city inside the Alaro City <clears throat> that is happening in um, the the western part, sorry, the eastern part, you know, of, of Lagos. Uh, I'm I'm taking my time to explain how we move from a from a law policy part, you know, um, where we're we're granted, we're doing intervention to an infrastructure, you know, part where everything we're doing on the infrastructure side, you know, we're deliberately creating jobs, we're deliberately creating local economics for the citizens and for the youth in various areas. And we're deliberately, you know, working with them at our various locations. You know, I think the, 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 <clears throat> the third and the final one is to, to be able to use um, um, the skills, you know, that, that we've got around making Lagos um, um, work for, for all of us. What do I mean? Um, our policies, our, our interventions, our, our programs must be in a way where, you know, there should be high quality living for our businesses and for our investments, you know. So deliberately, we must look at, you know, ease of doing business. Deliberately, what does it cost? You know, I've mentioned a lot of the youth that are doing great things on their own, you know, the private sector that are doing a lot of things, you know, and supporting government, but how as a government, do we need to resolve and remove bottlenecks to ensure that you know there's a lot of automation around you know interventions with government? There's a lot of digitalization around what is happening you know in our lands department, in our property administration department, and in effective tax administration. You know it's something that we deliberately are focusing on because if you do all of these great things and we do not have that handshake where ease of doing business. A young, a young, a young person can indeed, you know, um, um, set up his own his own business, you know, um, um, remotely. I mean, online. He can indeed go into land transaction, you know, online, remotely. He can indeed get, you know, contract signed in terms of building permit remotely. Then we have not done a good job. So deliberately, we're also focusing in all of these areas. So we're about finalizing. I'm fine. I mean, I'm going live on on the digitalization process that we have on our land administration. We know that, you know, it's so difficult, you know, with land administration in Lagos State, you know, and we've gotten all of this feedback, you know, and we've spent huge amount of resource, you know, we've been able to um, digitalize all of these things, you know, and we're about to go live, um, I think before the end of this month of September, you know, on a modular kit, on a modular basis. So that things around fiscal planning approvals, you know, um, and line title, subsequent transaction on land transaction, you can be also be done, you know, easily from the comfort, you know, of your room, of your office or wherever you find, you know, your, yourself. Um, working beneath that, you know, is also to be able to create, you know, a, a, an efficient tax administration system. You know, um, yes, it's federal government that still has all of the, all of the tax issues with companies, with businesses, you know, but the payee, you know, that is individual, right? How will Lagos State make it seamless, you know, work for you, right? So the, the, so the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service is trying to make everything online and be, be as simple, you know, as, as, as possible. We also have what we call our last, week, our last, last, last record, which is Lagos State residence, you know, um, Lagos State residence um, identity card. Which is um, which is a subset of NIMSI. We don't want to call it NIMSI, 
because we know what the issues people have with names, but to walk underneath it. And it's some, supposed to help us, you know, know where everybody is in Lagos and, 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 and all of that. And I think that's also working, you know, um, we'll, we'll be launching, you know, the Lastra um, very, um, very, very soon. So, so deliberately, you know, as a government, you know, we want to um, continue to make um, Lagos um, an investment destination. We want to be able to continue to make Lagos, you know, work for each and every one of you. We want to deliberately make the living, the quality of life, you know, in Lagos, something that um, um, will be worth, you know, um, the effort of each and every one of, of our youth. And, and, and we continue to, you know, make sure that our policies and our, and our programs, you know, are, you know, are, are, are youth facing, you know, pro programs that can help. I think there's one, one um, intervention that, that I've not mentioned, which is the, the, the former, um, the late governor of Lagos State, Alaji Latif Jakonde, who set up a Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy. You know, a Latif Jakonde Leadership Academy is going to go live next year. This is an academy that is targeted at um, um, I'm activating about 25 to 30, you know, youth between the ages of 22, you know, and 35, and hold them in a leadership, you know, academy for 12 months, where we're creating, you know, the future of 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 of, uh, of people that might want to be interested in politics, you know, that might want to be interested in public service or in uh, or in um, or in civil service at that at that level. So deliberately. Where, where we will be putting up that curriculum and we'll be able to train, you know, people for a full one year, having, you know, um, all access, you know, around governance and how it works, you know, and giving, giving them the opportunity that after that, that, that leadership training, they can indeed, you know, understand and appreciate that what are the, the skills they need to have to be able to compete, you know, um, um, politically, you know, um, to whatever level um, they, so, they, so, they so desire. Um, as, I, as I round up, you know, um, one of the things that, that I would say is that um, no matter how we look at it, government itself cannot do it by itself. You know, everywhere in the world, government is meant to be an enabler, right? The, the, the real work is still with the private sector. The real work is still, you know, with the young entrepreneurs, you know, that are out there. You know, we cannot employ everybody, we cannot take everybody on, but we can create an enabling environment that people can indeed plan, people can indeed know that once I take my own part, government will do its own plan, will, 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 will do its own part. And that's one of the things I'm assuring you, I'm assuring you know, the alumni that that's the least that we can do to be able to create that, that, that space where the private sector know too well, they have the skills they have to be able to you know, you know, um, um, get a lot more people you know, off you know, the un unemployment market whilst government create the, the right um, 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 enabling environment for businesses to thrive and for things you know, to, to do well. I will, I will keep my, my gunpowder dry. I still have 14 more pages of work to do, but I, I've looked at you know, the time that has been allocated. Maybe there are other areas which question and answer will specifically hand, um, I'll be able to deal with you know, or clarifications or issues that is bordering on anybody that is in this webinar, I'm willing to take it on. Um, as I hand over to Mr. Sonny Rabo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Very articulate presentation there, I must say. And uh, it shows you are very hands-on with what is going on. We've had so many questions, so I'm just gonna take them one after the other. Um, may I have your permission? Do I take one at a time or do I take a few at a time? You let me know, sir. No, you can take a few at a time so that I can okay. answer. Yeah, about three. Right. Okay, I'll take the first three questions. And the first one is from Astukwa James. And it says, Lagos has a lot of youths surviving by riding motorcycles, some selling in traffic. What is the government doing to remove them from the streets and make the state a truly mega state? That's question number one. I will just take the question again for ease of uh, reference. Lagos has a lot of youth surviving by riding motorcycle, some selling in traffic. What is the government doing to remove them from the streets and make the state a truly mega state? That's from Asukwa James. 
The next question is from Taiwo Adewale. And he says, how can the state integrate the IVLP mentorship as International Visitors Leadership Program mentorship and Waste to Wealth Program in, the, all, the school, in all the schools in Lagos, looking at the volume of waste generated daily in Lagos? and many end up blocking the drainages. Taiwo Adewale, and I'll take the question a second time. How can the state integrate the IVLP mentorship and waste to wealth program in all the schools in Lagos, looking at the volume of waste generated daily in Lagos, and many end up blocking <clears throat> the drainages? The last one in this first series, sir, is from Igberaja Sherumu, and it says, of all the skills development programs, can the recipients of these programs compete for global jobs? And is there a job linkage or placements after the training? I'll take that question again from Igbera Serumu. Of all the skills development programs, can the recipients of these programs compete for global jobs? And is there a job linkage or placements after the training? Those are the first three, Your Excellency. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rabo. These are obviously very thought-provoking questions. I think the first one for Mr. Asuko, um, challenges of youth on our streets, riding Okada and that are selling in traffic. Um, it's, it's a big challenge, and I'm not going to sit down here and tell you that um, there's a quick fix solution. There's certainly not a quick fix solution. This is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a national problem, you know, that is driven, you know, by the failure of government and governance at all levels, you know, nationally, right? So what, what you see is that on a daily basis, you know, we have a population that comes to Lagos and do not go on a daily basis. And we all, we've all seen it, we've all seen trailers of, of, of loot of, carrying people in Okada and coming in. Unfortunately, you know, we do not have a border post. We do not have a border post that is going to check visas and say that there is no entry, you cannot do it. So at, in all times, all of our best efforts will amount to that we have not done it, you know, because very next day, another set of people will come in. And so that's why I'm not holding people for other arms of government. And that's why I say it's a failure of government at all levels, you know. I mean, I am in government, so I'll take, you know, also, Part of, of part of the claim. But what can we do as, as our own government here? I mean, the, the easiest thing to say, which is always very convenient, is to say we're, we're banning it, which we've done before, which, we're, which we've seen some of the fallout, we've seen some of the backlashes, you know, which is why we now say that let us indeed provide alternatives, you know, to our citizens before they can, for a, for a mega city like you observe, you know, um, 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 Okada and riding, it cannot be the best form where we can use to adjudge ourselves, you know, as, as a city that is. But indeed, it's still providing some sort of livelihood for some people. We also have issues around these people turning it into a security issue because we've seen a lot of, you know, um, 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 traffic robbery and sort of snatching of phones and also being perpetrated by this. So we're working on a model. We're working on a model where we can indeed, you know, get as many you know, um, that we can monitor and manage by registration. And if that doesn't happen, right, then we're still going to go back to the effect of banning, you know, on a fixed model. You know, we have to ban in some area, enforce it, ban and, and but what is the alternative? We have provided last mile, first mile buses. We launched the first 500 of the last mile small buses as a means of taking people to their, to their final destination. So we just don't want to, you know, ban, you know, or take them off the street without providing sufficient, you know, um, alternative. And that's why I said that people also must now start learning how to use the waterways. The real infrastructure is coming before the end of next year. We're buying a big more buses, you know, and so we're providing adequate alternative for people to move. You know, the only ones that are going to left will be the ones that are using it for logistics. The ones that are indeed are delivery services that are happening. That's the, that's the plan. And we're going to come back to that. This is the same thing also with street trading. You know, as I'm talking to you, there's a full four gang. A, a gang consists of 
they have a black maria, they have officers, they have police that are going around and they're picking people, right? They're picking, you know, beggars. We're, we're actually profiling them. You know, we, we just don't, we have a lot of social issues that um, we, we don't want to throw the baby and the bath water away, right? So, so we need to be true to ourselves, you know, and be able to know that what is the cost of this thing. All of those um, 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 traffic sellers, the people that are selling, you know, a larger percentage of it come from a particular state in the country. I, I don't need to mention the state. They come from a particular, because we've done, we've done the demographic, we know it. And so we're having off-site conversation with some of those states. These are states that have not encouraged male to go to secondary school. They've not encouraged them to go to school. And so they all just back to find themselves in Lagos and they think the easiest place for them is just to continue to hawk you know, on the street. We've seen attempts where they've tried to arrest them and take them off the street. You've seen some backlashes, you know, uh, with police being, you know, um, not, not orderly whilst doing that, you know, and just making things very, very difficult. So, so the whole point is around, you know, um, advocacy and providing technical, um, technical and vocational training for some of these things. You, so you must be able to give them an alternative, you know, and that's why whilst we plan in Lagos, if we have that huge influx that we see on a daily basis, you make a mess of our total plan. Because each time you plan and the, the, the numbers keep changing because of the, of, the, of the influx of people, it will appear as if you are just reacting. But it's not you know, something that we're not unaware of. We're trying to balance economy. We're trying to balance social issues. We're trying to balance security issues. You know, and these are very serious you know, um, 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 dealings that, that as your governor, that, that, that it gives me sleepless nights. So as you call, you can rest assured that it's something that we're working on. Taiwo, um, you asked how IVLP mentoring um, can move on to waste to wealth in all of our schools. Indeed, I would want to get your, your, your detail, you know, if it's that area you're interested in. We currently have, you know, a youth academy, you know, in, with, that are working with our, with our waste management authority. You know, um, 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 just last week I saw it, you know, about 150, you know, um, um, children from various secondary schools, you know, were just graduated from, from the academy. They usually do, you know, like a one week, you know, um, 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 process, you know, sorry, one week training um, in, a, in, a, in, in Loma. So, so we have, we don't have it in all the schools yet, you know, because we have primary school, got over a thousand primary schools, secondary school, got over 600 secondary school public by the way, you know, so we don't have it in all the schools yet, but we're taking them on a case on, so on a district by district level. We know that if we can catch, you know, um, 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 if we can catch the, the, the youth from secondary school, the advocacy will work well because they will take the information back to their parents and they will understand that, you know, waste to wealth, waste sorting, waste management are things that their parents need to understand and appreciate and do. Because sometimes some of these adults, they are set in their ways, they don't understand it. So we've, we've, we've designed a model where we go to the schools, let them see it, how to sort waste, how to ensure that even the waste that are being collected can be turned to cash. Let me give you a simple you know, um, um, yeah, um, story. So we realize that today now, a kilo, a, if, if you to measure a kg of plastic waste, you can get you know, as as 1,500, so 1,300. A, a kilogram or something, you know, so you, if you weigh. But the person who is in the house, right, would probably, is not probably aware. So there's a line chain of middlemen that collects, you know, all of these things. By the time it's getting to the household, the household is not encouraged because he probably is not given more than 100 naira, you know, to do that. And the, 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 the middleman gets as as 1,000, 1,200. So we're trying to remove the middlemen where if you can if you can sort your waste plastic especially and you can they can come and buy it off you the revenue accrued for me can go directly you know to you as against using you know middlemen you know and and, and, and all of that so Taiwo we're working on it we we, we generate 13,000 metric tons on a daily basis and that's a huge number that presents a lot of opportunity in ways to work conversion and you can test you can check the website of Loma you know and you see all of the great things they're doing and like I said out of this meeting, if you give me your email or something, I can still forward some of the things that we're doing, you know, regarding waste management. Um, I think there's a third one. Um, Sonny, you didn't pronounce the name very well. Um, so I don't want to make <laughs> his name. Um, yes, so yes, yes. Um, Igbera Jaya Serumo. 
Igbera okay. just the rumor. Right. <laughs> So the question is, all of these things that we're doing, can they compete you know, globally? My answer is yes, they, they can indeed, because that's why you know, from even the university, that's what we're doing, even the curriculum of our university, we're turning even the university that we think cannot meet the future of work. We're turning them, we're turning those institutions into proper university, and we're challenging them. In Lasso today now, there's, we're, we're developing curriculum about almost every course you must have an entrepreneurial um, 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 module, you know, in, in, in your course content. You must have it by, 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 by whatever means. In our schools too, we're trying, we've set up a model, we're trying to turn some of our schools into comprehensive school. We realize that not everybody, you know, needs to also leave school and go to SS3 and go to university. There are people that indeed from DS2, 3, they want to be, you know, in entertainment industry. They want to be in the music industry. So we're tweaking the curriculum to be able to, while still giving the conventional, they can also go, you know, in that line. And we will begin to see that come out as a model of some of our secondary schools. So yes, the question is, um, so, so the answer is they could be, I mean, um, 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 uh, compete globally, right? The training we're doing uh, with Dell York and um, Ebony Life Academy, Right, that I talked about in the, in, the, in, the, in the entertainment space. These are being trained by, 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 by faculty that is choosing you know, from every part of the world. They are, they are first class faculty, you know, and, 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 and I'm sure coming out of some of those trainings, you can indeed you know, um, make your, make your, 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 your training you know, and, and the skills, you can make it you know, available worldwide. Around the link, I think on a case by case basis, there are different links, you know, our graduate internship scheme, you know, I don't have a link in my head, right? But I'm sure if you go to the legacy website, there's a lot that we can share with you. And there's still a lot coming out of this meeting that I can give to you know, a lot, you know, and you can also share with, with the full, you know, list of the alumni, you know, just so that we can continue to enrich, you know, um, 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 the, the partnership that we're, we're seeing going forward. So Sonny, Thank back you. Yes, Your Excellency. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the next set of questions, uh, this one's from David Anyele. So what's the government doing to include people living with disabilities in Lagos state programs? What's the government doing to include people living with disabilities in Lagos state programs? That's from David Anyele. And that's question four. Question five is from Oluremi Hamid. How can some of our organizations partner with the state government in deploying some of these solutions? From Oluremi Hamid, how can some of our organizations partner with the state government in deploying some of these solutions? And the last of that question six is from Adejuwon Adeneye. So what is the plan of the Lagos state government in utilizing alternative energy with all the abundant energy sources available. What is the plan of the Lagos State Government in utilizing alternative energy with all the abundant energy sources available? Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so David, what is government doing with people living with disability? A lot. And I dare say with all sense of responsibility, a lot. Um, I have two senior special assistants that are, in, that are people also uh, of disability that are in my government. Two, um, deliberately you know, um, 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 appointed you know, to fill that space. We have a full agency, a full, full agency of people living with disability, a full agency. And it is one of the most vibrant agency you know, um, that we have. The general manager himself is, is, is a person of disability, you know, and we'll make sure that indeed, you know, um, we, we, we give them all the tools and all the, all, all the support that they require. And what do I mean? For example, you know, we started this program well over four years ago. Every public building that we are building must have, you know, um, um, uh, must have um, a design that fits into people living with disability. It must have a ramp, it must have, you know, they, are, they must have bathrooms that must sit with people um, living with disability. So it's, it's a policy that we have in Lagos State. 
any form of public building, you know, that we're, that, that, that we're constructing most, most uh, a lot of our appointments, you know, um, it's um, um, one person with disability must be there in a lot of our committee appointments, you know, that, that we have deliberately, we must look for, look for somebody of, 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 uh, of, um, of, of disability so that we can continue to, to um, make the place for them. But other than that, right, my government is also working with a several, several NGOs. There are several NGOs that are doing great things that you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. All you need to do for them is to provide a support for them, financial support, grants, equipment, you know, so that they can continue to provide, you know, those supports that they currently, and we're working with all of them. We're working with all of them. I even last December, May this year, I've hosted several um, events that are targeted with, for people living with disability. And, you know, even in our recruitment, in our recruitment in the service, right, um, we, de we, we, we actually ensure that that is enshrined. We cannot put a particular number there, but what we do is each time we find, you know, a skill, you know, um, that, is, that, that, that is required. Even when, you know, um, we, we are not in full employment, we deliberately, I mean, uh, make an exception and ask, you know, the Civil Service Commission to give such person, you know, um, um, uh, an employment. And I've done that um, in the last two years, I've done it several, several, from lawyers, you know, to, to architects, to town planners. I have deliberately, deliberately, you know, done that to bring them in, into the service. But like I said, we have a full agency that is functional, that is working, you know, on disability, because sometimes you also need to sit back, right, and let, you know, their, 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 their request, come to you so that you don't assume that you know it. And like I said, there are two of my senior special assistants that I recruited, you know, that, that are also um, fully, fully, you know, working with my office to ensure that um, and everybody that requires a support and help um, based on, you know, the disability um, and government is, 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 is available to, to, to help them. Um, Oluremi partnership, with um, the Lagos State government in all of these interventions we're doing. Well, at the end of this program, if you did permit me, I can leave some telephone numbers, some emails of some offices, you know, that, that are directly involved, you know, in some of the things that I've, that I've mentioned, you know, and like I said, you know, out of this meeting too, we can share a lot more names and, and links, you know, with, um, with the secretariat, you know, and I'm sure you, you can, um, they, they can be, it can be circulated or set, I mean, you know, amongst the alumni, you know, in a more efficient, you know, and, and um, functional manner. So, so we're, we're willing and we're happy to have those partnership, you know, and like I said, we really cannot do it all by ourselves. So partnerships are important and partnerships are the things that make, um, that make the world also be a better place. Um, so, so like I said, I have names that I, that I can share with you um, um, at the end of this meeting or even going forward. Um, Adejuwon, what is our plan of Lagos State provide alternative energy. There's a lot we're doing. And if I dare say so, I mean, I, I have previous, you know, consulting experience in power. So I know the, the, the industry too very well. Um, I was involved in the privatization. We have continued to engage, you know, both the discos that are in Lagos, but we don't want to make them, you know, to continue to give us excuses. You know, as we speak, Lagos State is the only one that has six IPPs, six, six independent IPPs that are off grid. We are the only ones that have it, right? So, so you can see that deliberately as a government, you know, um, even the way the, the, the house I'm living, you know, is, is, is under, is not on, on the national grid, it's an IPP. But other than IPP, which we all know the model, you know, um, and CNG and gas and all of that. In schools, a lot of our eco-digital skills that we're talking to, you know, as we're speaking, a lot of the technology that we're building in our schools, we're using solar panel, you know, to run them because we know that they, they have to, you know, have adequate power around the clock. And so as you speak, if my numbers are not, are not failing me, about 150 schools already are in, in, in getting new, new, new solar system. About 180 had before, but we had issues around, some of them have, have, have not been well maintained. You know, you don't have to go up and clean, you know, and, and some of the things that are there. So, so we are also um, learning new, um, 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 smarter um, solar panels that hitherto that we had about three, four years ago. So we're changing some of the panels now. So in schools, we're doing that. In hospitals, 
In hospitals, in critical components in our hospital, we also have alternative sources that are being run in our general hospitals. As we speak, we're changing the entire um, 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 lightning that we have in Lagos, you know, over 12,000, you know, um, um, lightning poles, over 12,000 lightning poles that cover over a thousand kilometers of street lights in Lagos. We're changing everything to alternative power, better LED, you know, smart um, technology that are going to be off, you know, off the grid, you know, so that will run on batteries and, and, and so, so all of that within our own space, where we're recreating, you know, alternative, you know, um, 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 energy sources, you know, that, that can take, that can free us off, off, the, off the grid. But outside of that, too, we're also deliberately um, 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 throwing back if, even to the distros. We procured 20,000, you know, um, meters, you know, that are going to be given to MSMEs, you know, um, um, and I promised them, you know, um, about 5,000 will go directly to small businesses, you know, where we can meter them. And once they're metered, we'll have a collaboration with the two discos, you know, where they've assured us that minimum of 80 to 20 hours will be given, you know, to all of these places that work. You know, you have to understand, you know, what is the regulatory, you know, environment we find ourselves. We are just finalizing our own electricity policy, you know, but we also can still not do it, you know, without reference, you know, to what the federal government has committed to with the two discos that are there. So off grid, you know, we're, we're doing a whole lot. We can still do a lot more, but you know, anything you, 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 are, you are looking at, there must be things that are within your own space of control. So our hospitals, our schools, which are within our control, we can indeed, you know, put, you know, um, alternative power running in all of these places. Thank you. Yeah, Rada Sone. Thank Rada you, Excellency. Yeah, yes, can I you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't plan to keep the His Excellency beyond one o'clock. So that okay. we, uh, you know, we have to be fair to him. Yeah. Okay. Your Excellency, do you want to spare more or do we move uh, conclude? No, yeah. um, and since you didn't give them notice before, we can just have one or two as a final one. Okay. Um, okay, let me just okay. take three questions. Thank you, sir. And then final, right, sir? Yes. Because I already have three. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, the question seven is from Olayinka Motosha. Where can youths go to to get more information in all the opportunities you have outlined? Where can youths go to to get all the information and all the opportunities you have outlined? And so question eight says, is there a program that will enable startups acquire property in the proposed business hub as enumerated by His Excellency? This is from Polake Oyedepo Benson. It says, is there a program that will enable startups acquire property in the proposed business hub as enumerated by His Excellency? Then the last question for the day says, this is from Sonny Rakpo. What is the plan of the state government to tackle drug and substance abuse in Lagos, having the highest figures of 33% in southwestern Nigeria? What is the plan of the state government to tackle drug and substance abuse in Lagos, having the highest figures of 33% in southwest Nigeria? From Sonny Irakpo. All right, Your Excellency, over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, like I said, I have um, a few links that I'm going to leave, you know, um, with you. I think my people have been sending me some of those links and um, I'll share them and I will also um, pass on a lot to the Secretariat so that they can, um, you know, put them in a way and manner that will be very useful um, to you. Um, I think the, the, the first question from Momoto Shaw speaks to, I mean, why we need to be able to share those information. It says, where can we get, you know, um, the link and information? Um, you know, like, you need to be able to get back to my people. Please, there are several, several links, you know, that, that we will, I think some of them have even been posted on the, on the chat, you know, as we speak, but, but let's be able to put it in, in an orderly manner, you know, and so that we can send them as a mail you know, so if, if you don't get it in the next two days, hold, yes, you know, sir. responsible for that, you know, if you don't, because she has, we've, we've all agreed that she should follow up and we can get all the links, you know, um, um, 
so that we, we, can, we can get all the links that is required. But one is Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. If you just Google them, you could see Lagos State Graduate um, Internship Program. If you Google them, you can see, you know, even as I'm speaking, that they're, 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 they're available. And Falake asked, you know, would the startups be able to acquire properties in a hub? You know, so, so that's a challenge. You know, the hubs are, they are hubs. They are meant to be incubator centers. You know, um, the moment, you know, you acquire them fully, right? I, I don't know what kind of design. If it is, if it is, the one in Alaro might be, you know, a very big campus where there might be space for startups to actually get, you know, get a, a piece of it and be able to stay there. But the one in Yaba, the one we're doing in Kappa, the one we're doing in Obalende, these are all hubs that are like incubator centers. You know, the whole idea is for players to come in for a week, for a month, or whatever time is it. And, um, and we're, we're believing that after those time, you will have graduated, you know, get enough experience, get enough funding to be able to, you know, spring out and, 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 and be able to stand in. Because it, 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 will, it, will, it will very quickly get filled up if everybody is kept as a permanent, you know, um, uh, resident, if you know what I mean. So that a, a hub is supposed to have, you know, a, a COVID time, you know, maybe six months or something. Um, um, this depends on what, what products we're talking about, right? And, 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 and thereafter, but not, I'm not sure to be full acquisition, you know, of, of, of a property at, 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 uh, at those hubs. I, I doubt it. But like I said, the, the big campus that we're planning to do outside Lagos is in Alaro, you know, is a, is a bigger plot of land, but I don't know if, if there will still be space to acquire, you know, land there. You know, um, um, I think the, the final question is from Sonny, and, and I think that's a very good question. It's a very, very tough one. You know, what is the state government doing, you know, to address, you know, uh, drug abuse, substance abuse, you know, in Lagos? Um, I'll challenge you 33%, but you see, so this is, this is the reality of a mega city. You know, in every mega city in the world, right, will come up with challenges like this, right? But so what are we doing to address the challenge? Well, we'll be addressing it from a social perspective, from a health perspective, you know, and also, you know, from an economic perspective. We're trying to first do um, an analysis, a psychosocial analysis of what is the root cause of this thing. Some are driven by the environment they find themselves. Some are driven, you know, by family issues, and some are just driven by peer pressure, right? So you need to understand this, the, the psychosocial, you know, um, 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 background to what we need, to, what you're dealing with, because you cannot also take every drug abuse or every substance case, you know, as a general case. You know, if you do, there's a whole lot of relapse, they will come back again. So almost every area, you know, almost every case, you know, have to be um, bespoke so that you can indeed treat them to a lasting solution. So what have we done as a government? First is infrastructure. We realize that we do not have enough infrastructure to be able to deal with it. And so as I speak with you, we're building the biggest rehabilitation center in the country. We're building the biggest is in a place called k 2 Jimmy. It's outskirts of Lagos. At the completion of that project, of that, of that, you'll be able to, to house about 1,500. You know, so that is massive, massive for us, which will be a rehabilitation center, you know, a detoxication center and all of it. You see, this is one part of one of our problems that we have in society that a lot of people do not want to talk about. People have it in their families, in their home, and people just want to gloss over and believe that it's a government problem. Government is going to deal with it. No, you know, mental health issues, you know, some of them now goes into drug issues, you know. So you cannot escape the two of them. Some start with just depression, mental health issue that now goes into abuse, right? And also the flip other side of it is peer pressure, security issues, you know, um, 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 and, and, um, and um, criminal issues. The ones that we can stratify and see as criminally minded or something, those ones you need to be able to deal with it decisively. You need to be able to deal with it decisively according. But the ones that are given by the effect of social, you know, um, maybe no, no proper family upbringing, you know, lack of proper parental care, you know, parents just abrogating their responsibility, people having children that they cannot take care of, you know, so that, I mean,
from the very beginning, they don't even have any social status. So they're just going to be abandoned and left on the street, you know, and it becomes something that government has to take over. Peer pressure, you know, what are the things? They, they go back from school, they get home, are parents even listening to them? You know, are you, you know, hearing your children now? There's so many gamut, you know, that, that, that we are learning and we're studying in it. You know, I've taken time to explain, just for me to assure you that we're not sleeping back. You know, we're not just sitting back and not doing anything. We're working with, you know, the Drug Law Enforcement Agency. We have created a full new department in our Ministry of Health that is understudying and, 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 and addressing, you know, um, 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 social, uh, I mean, sorry, um, drug abuse and, and, and substance abuse in a, in a local economy. And some, like I said, are just criminally minded. You know, and they are the, they are the ones that we can go and flush out almost immediately. And I can assure you that government will not stop at it. There are some flashpoints, there are some places, area where you just go to there and you need to wrap them up and just, and just clean them up. But it's not a war that the government alone can win. You know, it's not a war that government alone you know, can have a solution to. It's a full societal problem. It's a full, you know, own issue that all of us need to take back with our religious leaders, with our community leaders, you know, with people of influence, you know, and it's a full, you have to use the entire spectrum to be able to at, 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 um, achieve the desired result. And we're working with all of them. We're working with different NGOs, we're working with different agents, we're working with different, you know, um, religious bodies to be able to ensure that the advocacy and the discussion around it is, is, is enormous, you know, and there's just, you know, pressure everywhere, you know, the pandemic also have thrown up a lot of, a lot of pressure, economic pressure on people, you know, that people were out of jobs, you know, and, and, and it just, before you know it, people get depressed and if they don't have, you know, counseling, if they don't have opportunity of also, they will just, uh, before you know it, it takes a very little while where you just meet the street. So, Sonny, I want to, I want to say to you that, um, there's a lot that we're doing, right? And there's a lot that we continue to, in terms of infrastructure, these are just two things that I've mentioned. We're building facilities, you know, we're building, you know, um, places where we can take them to. And we're developing a lot of advocacy. You know, people need to speak up and speak out. You know, people require needs problem. A lot of our hospitals were trained, we're actually designing, you know, places where if mental health issue are things that we need to put to the front, front, burn, front burner, right? And from economic angle of it, you know, the people that are the carriers and the people that are messing up like, once we, 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 we were able to track them, it is to, to have the full lot of the law on them. So like I said, it's three prone. There is a social issue, you know, there's a health issue, there's an economic issue, you know, that we all, that needs to be handled differently and separately you know, to be able to, to, to be able to kill it off. But like I, like I did mention, is also, you know, one of the sub moments or one of the, one of the problems of a mega city of the size that we have in Lagos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. This is so awesome. Uh, very few, just a, uh, just a little more time. We have something to show to you, which will be displayed on the screen very shortly. And uh, then of course, we'll be inviting um, the Vice President of the USG to make uh, closing remarks. And, but let me quickly acknowledge the fact that the Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Honorable uh, Daudu, is here. Shegun Daudu, you're very welcome. Of course, your boss is there so, but we have to acknowledge that you are the, you are the man directly in charge of youth and uh, uh, social development. So, welcome. But your excellency, so there's totally, totally done from Taylor Waste by an alumnus, member of the Mandela Washington Fellows, Tim Undi Dianye. He's based in Lagos. I think he's from Calabar. And said, Your Excellency, we just want to let you see what waste to wealth programs can do. And this is by alumni members. As you can see it on the screen, we are proud to present that to you, sir. Ah. <laughs> yes, what's your comment on this, sir? Okay, I think he's not there. Right, let me now invite uh, Mrs. Rosemary Danese, Vice President of the USG of Projects, Vice President Projects, USG, to please give you closing remarks. Uh, thank you, our anchor. 
Uh, Mr. Sonny Rabo, I thought I was to give the vote of thanks, not the closing remarks. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Vote of thanks. Vote of thanks. Okay. That's what I meant. Sorry, sorry. sorry. sorry? sorry? Yes. yes. Yeah, before uh, uh, Dr. Danesi comes in, um, yes. you know, in my closing comments, in my welcome remarks, yes. I had noted that uh, we look forward to a productive, stimulating, and very resourceful engagement. Uh, I'm sure everyone, I'm speaking as the president of the association, Everyone will agree with me that uh, the presentation the, has been has exceeded our expectations on all counts. A few days ago, when I made the contact with the PA to the His Excellency, I was told that His Excellency would only make a speech and not a presentation. I'm sure that uh, everyone will agree that what we have seen today is not just a speech, but you could see His Excellency that is on ground, that is mental with uh, you know, unprecedented details that we have all been, uh, that he has shared with us. His Excellency, we are indeed very, very grateful. You offered a hand of partnership, a hand of fellowship to our association, and so we look forward in the next few days, I'll be working closely with your office, with your personal assistant, to see how we can have an opportunity of a courtesy visit, where we can uh, have the opportunity to, you know, our members are on ground, our members are you know, actively involved in social entrepreneurship. I'm sure based on your presentation today, we'll be seeking for opportunities to deepen what we're doing in Lagos State. So I'll be reaching out in the next few days to get an appointment, an opportunity for a cost visit where we can share more closely what our members are doing. Once again, sir, you have been generous with your time. I saw a comment from the US consulate and they had no better description that you have been you know, generous with information, with details. And that represents the view of everyone. Thank you, sir on behalf of the association. Over to you, Dr. Danesi. Well, thank you, my president. Um, wow, that was uh, an awesome presentation. Um, it's been great listening to uh, dear uh, Governor, His Excellency, uh, Governor Babajide Sonwulu. So on behalf of our president, Dr. Jude MMA, and the entire USGA, first of all, I I give a really heartfelt thanks to His Excellency, Governor Babajide Sonwoli, for creating time out of his busy schedule to grace this occasion on the fourth anniversary celebration of the USGA. We are sincerely grateful and honored, sir, for accepting our invitation. Today, we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts on issues that concern our youth who form the bulk of our population. And this is definitely encouraging us in our future events. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and shown us a new path, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for honoring us. And we are indeed really very, very uh, grateful for that uh, great, awesome uh, pre presentation. We really appreciate you, sir. Um, then uh, with this sense of appreciation, we thank our distinguished speaker, Mr. Stephen Ibelli, the Acting Consul General, U.S. Consulate, Lagos, for adorning and gracing the occasion and sharing your thoughts today on this uh, uh, topical issue. We know how busy you are, sir, and we are deeply honored that you took out time from your busy schedule to honor us. We thank you and the entire US Consulate Lagos for making this event happen. Without your help and support, it wouldn't have been possible. You assured us that our governor would be here today and he is indeed here. We are indeed uh, most grateful. Uh, we also thank the uh, Deputy Public Affairs Officer, Ms. Jennifer Foles, of the United States Consulate Lagos. We are uh, grateful for the role 
uh, she played in ensuring that this event is a reality. And we thank you for your support always. I would like to express our sincere thanks to Mr. Sonny Rabo, the anchor of this program, who incidentally is a member of the USGEA, for his excellent anchoring of these events. We really do appreciate you, sir. Well, Your Excellency Governor Sonwodu and Mr. Stephen Ibebi, ladies and gentlemen, such an event as this cannot happen overnight. We'll start rolling around two months ago. It required planning and a bird's eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be supported by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues who are result oriented. A special mention to our president, Dr. Jude MMA, being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best and stand as a pillar of power and support. With deep sense of appreciation, we thank you, Dr. Emily. I want to thank the USGA Executive Committee and members who worked behind the scene to execute this event. We are indeed most grateful. Lastly, but not the least, I thank everyone who took out time to attend this seminar. We really appreciate your active uh, participation. Thank you so much, everyone, and wishing us all God's abundant blessings. And we also pray to, for our governor that God will continue to guide him aright. You are doing so well, sir. We appreciate what you are doing, and God will continue to help you to realize all the plans, all the good, laudable plans that you have for Lagos State. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so, I mean, the POC, um, President, I'm sure you all know Buki. Um, Tinola, you know Buki. Um, you have our contacts. So we can set up a court visit and the presentation and all the links. She can, she can get it all organized today, tomorrow. I'm sure, I'm sure you have our contact, um, Bukola O'Day. So she's one of my assistants. And so she has all of the... Um, Everything that you require, she, she, she will make it happen. And um, I think Mr. Rabo was speaking then. I saw my, somebody has forwarded to me my <laughs> virtual portrait. Very, very nice, you know. Um, so this is the, this is real modernity now. I mean, I, I saw it, I was wondering. So it's a virtual portrait that I get. It's very nice. We'll print it up. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you all and uh, all of you on behalf of the, the president, I want to thank you again as uh, Madam Vice President has done and it's been a pleasure serving you. God bless you all and goodbye from me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.